Hello and welcome back to this week's edition of 5 Minute Geography with me Stephen Doyle explaining as simply as possible the world around us. This week in 5 Minute Geography we discover how we can predict global population growth. And don't forget to stick around to the end of the video to discover what would happen to the world's population if all women were entitled to an education. The demographic transition model has been developed by researchers to help explain population change over time. Researchers and demographers have noticed that as an economy develops, both economically and socially, the population goes through massive changes. The population of a region, a country and the globe will change from high birth rates and high debt rates to low birth rates and low debt rates because of this economic development. The demographic transition model helps predict global patterns in terms of population. It's broken into five stages. Stage one, or the high fluctuating stage. The birth rates here are high because children are seen as an economic asset. And because many children die before the age of five, therefore people tend to have more children to ensure that some of them survive. Debt rates here are also high because of things like war or unsafe or contaminated water supplies, famine and infection. Europe was once at this stage during the Middle Ages. However, there are still a few tribal groups in remote areas such as the Amazon rainforest and Borneo that may be still at this stage today. Birth rates are high and death rates are high, therefore cancelling each other out, leaving the overall population growth to be very small. In stage two, or the early expanding stage, we can see that the economy begins to grow. Birth rates remain high because of the low status of women, the high infant death rates, and the tradition of having large families. Debt rates decline sharply here because of new technologies such as filtered water and childhood vaccinations. This has led to a sharp natural increase in the overall population. During stage two, birth rates still remain high, but the debt rates decline sharply. As a result of this, the overall population begins to grow. Again, Europe was at this stage during the 19th century when the Industrial Revolution brought with it a lot of economic development. Countries that are in the early stage of development, mainly Sub-Saharan Africa, such as South Sudan, are at this stage today. Stage three, or the late expanding stage. During this stage, the economy continues to develop. Parents have fewer children because the status of women has increased with education. Infant death rates decline and population becomes more urbanized. The birth rate also declines sharply here and the death rate also declines with increased life expectancy. Strong economies in Europe and the USA, Canada and Japan have reached this stage at the end of the 19th century and the early 20th century. During this stage, rapidly developing countries such as Brazil and Mexico have reached this stage after the 1960s. And today, India and Bangladesh are now at this stage. In stage four or the low stationary stage, the economy is now well developed with mass education, good healthcare, good services, and women have a high status in society. Couples practice family planning, Children here are now seen as economic liability. Mothers have an average of about two children, as many mothers also have a career. At this stage, birth and death rates are very close and the population grows very slowly. Most European countries, the USA and Canada, reached stage four several decades ago. Rapidly developing economies such as South Korea, China and Taiwan are now at stage four. Birth rates continue to drop or level off. Death rates are the same. Although population growth continues to be high, it begins to steady. The final stage of the demographic transition model is stage five, the senile stage. It's during this stage here, people in wealthy economies have now become very well off. Many women choose to have no children or just one child. The age profile of a population increases and birth rates actually drop below the debt rates. 
this now is causing a natural decrease in a region's population. The population is not replacing itself. Without migration, the population actually declines. Many of the most developed countries are now at this stage, including Britain, Germany, Italy, Japan and Singapore. But what can we actually predict about population growth by using the demographic transition model? Well, we know that many countries in the developing world are still at stage 2 and at stage 3 of the model. In the short term, the population of these countries will grow. Almost all of the annual global population increase in the future will occur in developing countries where women's status and education still lag behind the developed world as more and more countries reach stage 4 of the model fewer people will be added to the global population. We can see that as a country develops economically and socially, population begins to decrease. The number of countries at stage 5 of the model will increase over time. This will lead to a decline in population in those countries. For instance, it's estimated that the population of Japan will decline by one third by 2065. If every woman in the world received a secondary school education, the population of the world could be 3 billion people less by 2050. As always, I've been Stephen Doyle with 5 Minute Geography. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, please click the like and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like me to cover a specific topic, please just pop it in the comment section below.